Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in today's video tutorial, I'm sharing with you this fold flat gift box that is sized to fit one of the Hostess Baby Bunt Cakes. How cute is that? I love these baby buns and they are delicious. I tried one the other day. So this box will fold flat for storage, which I absolutely love. I think Poodles probably came up with the first fold flat box, but how cool is that? I absolutely love this box. Now let me share the measurements with you. When closed, the box measures three inches by three inches by one and a half inches tall. We are using the Whimsy and Wonder Specialty Designer Series paper. Do you see that gorgeous iridescent foil here? I love this paper, really beautiful colors for the holidays. And it's just a wonderful paper to work with. And we're using the stamp set Sweets and Treats. I've got the sentiment, a tasty treat for someone sweet. I stamp this and colored and blends just the holly leaves and the berries to add that little embellishment there. We've got the wonderful snowflake peeking from behind there and it's just a super fun box. So let me show you how fun and easy this is to make. We're gonna start with a piece of polished pink cardstock that measures seven and a half inches by 10 10 and a half inches. And along the seven and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at three quarters and two and a quarter from each side. So just go ahead and rotate it 180 and repeat three quarters and two and one quarter. And I'm gonna turn it to the long side and we're gonna score this at one and a half, four and a half, six and nine. If you only wanted to remember two measurements, you could do one and a half, four and a half, rotate it and do one and a half and four and a half again. You do wanna hold onto your stylus from the Simply Scored or you can use the stylus on the Take Your Pick tool. Bringing in the template here, we're gonna do some diagonal score lines. I'm gonna grab my metal ruler here and I just wanna show you on the template itself. We actually have six one and a half inch squares. You just wanna pick four that are close to each other and we are gonna score diagonally from corner to corner. And you can see the diagonal score lines are going outwards this way and outwards this way. So on our cardstock, I'm just gonna pick these four squares. Let me show you that in the light here. So one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna come in, I like to start with the ball tip right where I want that score line to start, then bring my ruler to the stylus and score. Now let me go ahead and do the remaining three diagonal score lines. All right, like so, you can see those diagonal score lines there. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines except for those diagonal score lines for now. All right, so now it's time to start cutting away here, and I'm actually on the back side of the paper. It's just easier for me to see the score lines that way. And we're gonna start with the two diagonal score lines towards the bottom, okay? I'm gonna cut up the first vertical score line in and up to the first horizontal score line, and I'm cutting just to the left of the score line. I like to cut away the score lines on this project. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and I'm gonna remove that corner like so. And you'll see that those score lines remain on the piece that I removed. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side here. So coming in one vertical score line and cutting up to the first horizontal score line, turn a quarter of a turn and then remove that corner piece like so. Now I'm gonna turn this 180, turn the template 180 as well. The next thing I'm gonna do is come in two vertical score lines from the right and go up two horizontal score lines and stop. Again, I'm cutting just to the left of the score line. And I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and I'm gonna remove these four sections here again, removing that score line. Now the next thing we wanna do is remove this little section. So I'm just gonna come in and cut on this side, and then again on this side to remove that. So now these two sides look similar, okay? I'm gonna turn it back this way and we're gonna repeat the same thing. Come in to the second vertical score line from the left and cut up to the second horizontal score line. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and remove these whole sections. Then again, we're gonna remove this little section here, like so. So we've got all of our cutting is done. You do wanna save onto these scraps so we can go ahead and punch out the little scalloped oval piece from this. Bringing in the detailed trio punch and I'm actually gonna round some corners here. So we're gonna round the top two corners of the box here. 
And then I also want to round these two flaps that we have left. So the easiest way to do that is to fold to give us a flat edge here. Then that's going to let us use the guide and the punch to go ahead and punch that rounded corner. And then you're just going to work your way around doing the same thing, getting that flat edge and punch. All right, like so. Now the last thing I'm going to do is going to come in and fold and burnish on those diagonal score lines. You do want the diagonal score lines to fold in, so just maneuver your paper in a way that you can come in with the bone folder and burnish those. And it's just a matter for me of just folding and then folding on those diagonal score lines and burnishing. They go together quite easily since we've already scored it. I'll show you where we're going to apply glue in a minute, but I just wanted to show you this is kind of how this box is going to go together like this. Before we adhere the designer series paper, I'm actually going to put my magnets on here. And I've got magnets. These measure 1 quarter of an inch by 1 32nd, and they're from Total Element. So if you visit the paperpixie.com slash Total Element and you add coupon code paperpixie, you'll get 10% off. So I'm going to grab two of the magnets. I've got four of them here. And then I'm going to apply those to my mini Mini glue dots roll here. Now this is the front of our box. This is the top flap. So I'm actually going to adhere these to the front using the take your pick tool. And I'm just going to move that in about a half of an inch. So they look like that. Now again, this is the front flap of the box. Now here's the trick. We're going to flip this over and with my other two magnets, I'm just going to drop them down on that flap and they're so strong. They're going to line up the proper positive and negative here. I love that. And then on these two that we just dropped there, I'm going to add glue dots to the back. Just like that. So we've added the glue dots there. Now here's the trick to get them lined up. I'm going to fold up from the first score line and down from the second score line. So we've got the first score line. I'm folding this piece up. I'm folding down on the second score line and then I can just press this flat and then those magnets are going to stick right where we want them to go. Now we can put on our designer series paper. I've got six pieces of the Whimsy and Wonder designer series paper. One piece measures two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And the remaining five pieces measure one and a quarter by two and three quarters. Now on these pieces, if you had a directional pattern, you want to make sure you cut them in landscape. Now one of these pieces, I'm going to round the bottom two corners using the detailed trio punch like so. This piece we're going to adhere over those magnets on the front flap. And I recommend that you use liquid glue for this and be a little bit generous with the glue, but not so much that the glue is going to ooze out everywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and layer this over those magnets. You do want to take your time pressing this into place to make sure there's no gaps in the paper and that glue should sit right around those magnets. It's one way to keep the magnets in place. So there we go. You've got a little bit of bump outs from the magnets, but it's not noticeable. You can always add something to the front of that if that bothers you. So now we're going to work our way around the rest of the panels. Our two and three quarter inch square piece is going to go right here on the top of the box. And then the remaining four panels are going to work our way around here. You just need to pay attention to the orientation if you have a directional paper. This piece is actually going to go upside down. This piece will go right side up. This next piece will go right side up as well. I'm actually going to turn it around this way and then it needs to be upside down. I do recommend you just dry fit your pieces if you've got directional paper to make sure they're all going in the right direction. And then finally this piece will go right side up. Just to clarify the direction of those papers, this is the top, 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 and top because when we fold up the box, you want to make sure that those sides are all going in the right direction. Okay. Now the next part is to glue this in a way that it will turn into a box, but can be stored flat. You'll see that we've got these triangular pieces here and I'm going to apply glue to this top triangle and this bottom triangle. So the triangle that takes up the top and bottom edges, those are the ones that you want to apply glue to. So we're going to work on one side at a time like so. So see the top triangle, the bottom triangle, then we can just fold this over and glue into place. Now the glue is only going to go on this top triangle here. I do like to come in with my bone folder and just burnish that into place as the glue adheres. All right, so that's one side. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So the triangle that takes up the top edge and the triangle that takes up the bottom edge. 
Then we can go ahead and fold that flat and adhere. And then here's the fun part. When we fold this up, that is going to form a box with these two side tabs. We'll fold the lid down and then that's gonna snap into place with the magnets. How cool is that? I love this box so much. And it will fold flat for storage, which is amazing. Now I'll grab my Hostess Baby Bunt cake, place that in the gift box, fold in the tabs, close the box, and let those magnets do their magic. How beautiful is that box? I love the size of it too. Obviously this doesn't have to hold a Baby Bunt cake. You can put any type of gift in here that would fit maybe a men's tie or a pair of socks, a candle, a bar of soap, maybe some body lotion, all kinds of stuff, some tea lights. Now let's go ahead and decorate the top of this box. All right, I'm grabbing a scrap piece of basic white and polished pink ink. We're gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment, a tasty treat for someone sweet. I'm gonna come in with the double oval punch and line up that sentiment there. I can save this white one for another project. And then remember those scraps, I'm gonna come in and punch the scalloped oval from one of the scraps. Next, I'm gonna stamp the fruit cake or the plum pudding, depending on where you are in the world, in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And all we really care about are the holly leaves and berries. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark polished pink and dark mossy meadow Stampin' Blends and color this in. Next, I'm gonna come in and fussy cut those. We've got those cute color coordinating holly leaves and berries. Now let's go ahead and layer our box here. So I've got this wonderful snowflake. I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue right in the center there and layer that in the middle of the box. Then I'm gonna layer my two double oval punch pieces. Layer a trio of Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. Pop that up on the top. Stick a mini glue dot behind those holly berries. Pop that up off to the left here. And finally grab a rhinestone and place that on the sentiment. And there we have our fold flat baby bunt gift box featuring the whimsy and wonder designer series paper paired with the sweet treats stamp set. Such a cute little bunt cake. I love this box and all the possibilities for so many different occasions. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects to inspire you. And if you don't wanna miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle and it's a great way to fulfill your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join and I'd love to welcome you to my team of paper pixies and the Stampin' Up! family. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.